Hey YouTubers, welcome back to the channel. Um, it's Monday. It's uh, actually really nice out. You can see Crash in the background there. I've got the car cover off her. She's uh, hankering for some parts. So um, I did what I said I wasn't going to do again. Um, I bid on a Copart car, sight unseen, uninspected. Um, so hopefully, uh, and for parts. So uh, it, it's, this isn't going to be a project car, I guarantee you that. Um, just a little bit about it. It was the, the, the auction this past Friday. Um, I had spotted this car. It's a black uh, 2008 uh, LS uh, with 281,000 miles on it. Uh, it had been in a very severe rear-end collision. Um, there's no rebuild in this one. Um, it uh, looked like the trunk was almost in the back seat. But the front end looked intact. The uh, hood, the front bumper, the headlights, the grills, the fenders, the, you know, the doors, they all look great. So um, I thought, well, I'm going to keep an eye on this. And if, if the bidding doesn't get too hot and heavy, uh, I'll throw a bid in on it and see what I can do. I've been kind of toying with the idea of, you know, uh, picking up another parts car, uh, not only for um, crash over here, but uh, I could use a few parts for the... Um, for the Copart, you know, the other black Impala, the, the project car that we've been working on. So anyhow, um, I started watching the auction and I noticed that participation was really low. Usually there's um, 1,800 to 24 people in the auction. Uh, Copart gives you that number, you know, there's 2,468 participants uh, in this auction. And that day there was probably 200, maybe 300 at times. It, participation wasn't all that great. So I knew there wasn't a whole lot of people. It was a, a crappy rainy Friday, and um, there were a lot of cars that weren't being bid on. This car, um, it, it had uh, no bids on it the entire week, and then I noticed the morning of the auction that there was a $200 bid on it, and I figured out something in case you guys um, ever wonder about this. Copart, on the morning of the auction, if they do not have any bids on the car, they will put a $200 bid on the car. That way, the first bid that you can make is 225 Now, prior to the auction, any first bid is $225. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, so that's how I knew that nobody bid on this car, that this was Copart doing this. So there was no interest in this car, and I, and I can't imagine why. It's not a rebuild project. It's, um, it's, it's parts, you know, I, I mean, and front-end parts at that. Um, it's not drivetrain parts. I certainly wouldn't want a drivetrain with 281,000 miles on it. So, um, the only person I was competing against was some, somebody out there who may need the same parts that I did, but apparently they weren't out of, you know, they weren't in the 300 people that were participating in this auction. So when the car came up, um, I let it go, you know, how it takes about 20 seconds for that, uh, that uh, ticker to clock down and I hit bid and it showed winning and I won it. So I won it for a total of $225 with fees out the door. It will be 521. That's right. Almost $300 in Copart fees. Um, I could probably save about $15 on that if I paid by money order or a cashier's, you know, bank check. But for me to drive to the bank and pick up a bank check would actually cost me more than $15 in gas. So I'm just going to pay by credit card. Um, this is kind of where being a consumer without a dealer's license sucks. Um, I mean, you can save a little bit of cash by, by paying by money order or cashier's check. Um, or bank check, um, but it's it's not a whole great deal savings. And you know we're talking. I think the the fee uh, buyer's fee was one hundred and thirty seven dollars, something like that, or one hundred twenty seven fifty nine for the um, for the gate fee, thirty nine for the internet bid fee, which you know paying thirty nine dollars for the pleasure of using their website when that's really the only way to bid on their cars is using their website. It seems kind of strange. Um, $50 for the title transfer and like $12 in state sales tax. So, um, comes in right at 521. We got the Suburban loaded up, uh, with some supplies. We're going to go pick up a trailer in the morning and we're going to head out to Ionia, um, which is about 83 miles away. And we're going to pick this car up. So hang tight till then. We'll see you in the morning. And we'll take you along for the ride. Have a good night's sleep and, uh, peace. All right. Good morning, folks. We're on our way.
way to pick up the car. First, we have to uh, pick up the trailer and uh, then wind our way up to the Copart facility in Ionia. It's, well, it's actually in Portland, Michigan. Um, it's cloudy, it's 46 degrees, a little bit of rain. This is going to be pleasant, although it's, it's better than the last time I was up here. If uh, you watch the video of uh, me picking up my first Copart car, um, it was like 15 degrees below zero. It was a frigid. Um, didn't make things very much fun. Anyhow, um, we'll give you some updates as we go along. This is going to be about an hour and a half to get up there. So, uh, Hopefully uh, the car is in good shape. One thing I've, you know, if, if you watch the video from me picking up the car last time, you'll... Um, see the story that uh, the car was damaged by Copart. The hood was bent. The uh, front bumper was cracked. Somebody had um, run into it with either machinery or another car or something. I'm hoping um, that that's not the case in this one. At least with the other black car, you know, the project car that you've been watching on, um, at least that car was in good enough shape that it could be uh, rebuilt, put back on the road. Um, a little TLC and become a nice car. This car that I'm picking up today is nothing but a parts car. Uh, it has 281,000 miles on it. It's an LS. It's got catastrophic damage to the rear end of the car that can't be rebuilt, or at least it shouldn't be rebuilt. And, and even if you did and you put all that work and money into it, it would be worth about two grand. You know, all, maybe 1,500. Um, so it's definitely not worth um, the investment in time or anything to make it anything other than a parts car. So if they damage the parts, um, there's going to be an issue. Uh, I'm going to go in the yard and I'm going to look at the car before. I'm going to look at a couple other cars that they have uh, listed for uh, their next auction. And if the car is damaged, I'm going to walk away from uh, I'm going to walk away from the car and I'm going to basically be sacrificing my co-part membership. And uh, I guess I'll be okay with that because if I can't buy an undamaged car from Copart, or at least, you know, a not further damaged car from Copart, um, then what's the sense in buying from Copart at all? I understand that these are, are damaged salvage auction cars, um, but, you know, you put the pictures out there and, you know, you, you buy a car like this for parts, and if they're going to damage the parts that you need off of it, before you pick the car up, then I, you know, I have no need, you know, no use for that. So um, we're gonna look at the car before we actually pay for it, and then uh, if it's damaged, I'm gonna go in and, and talk to the manager and tell him, hey, look, you know, this is the second time I've been up here, the second car that you've damaged. The first one I was able to make uh, some good use out of it. This one, um, you basically have, uh, you'd be stealing 500 bucks from me because. I will, you know, be taking it right from here, right to the duck here, you know, and, uh, they're not going to give me $521 for the car, I guarantee you that. So anyhow, that's kind of the, the plan for today, uh, we'll get the trailer hooked up here, I'm pulling in the, the town where we're going to pick up the trailer, and um, we'll get motoring up to uh, the Copart facility and get this thing um, taken care of today. Talk to you in a bit. And as you can see, uh, we got rain and um, about 42 degrees, so this is going to be a, a real pleasant experience. Anyhow, um, what's life without a little adventure? All right, um, I'll uh, once I get to Copart, I'll uh, check back in with you. We'll uh, go out in the yard and we'll see uh, if we can find my car and then we'll probably look at a couple others while we're there. I've always wanted to walk around the Copart yard. Anyhow, we will um, we'll update you here real soon. I just want to let you know we're getting pretty close here. So, uh, talk to you in a minute. Okay folks, we're here in the car Copart yard. This is the car. Um, looks to be in pretty good shape. I uh, told him I was here to check out some other cars and I kind of bought that for a dollar. I see the front bumper covers kind of split down there. That can be fixed really easy. And if it, you know, if I even want to bother with that at all. Uh, the fenders, the hood, the doors, everything seems to be in really good shape. Um, back here, of course, is a disaster. It's got a broken window. The trunk is 
Oh, Katie Wampus. Yeah, there's no fix in this car. I mean, that's that's a death sentence right there. But the good news is we'll be able to cut this out for a patch. Um, unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to do anything over here because that is just, uh, it's crumpled right in the spot where I would need to, uh, where I would need to um, cut. Anyhow, uh, it starts and it runs. Uh, the muffler's either torn from it or disconnected or whatever. It's laying on the ground. This thing sounds like Okay, it looks like I got three out of the power door locks that are... that are working, which is good, because I'll need, need those for uh, Black Beauty. Um, so, I'm fairly happy as long as they... Uh, oh, the other really cool part, these uh, Century Touring tires, which they're only $50 pair, you know, $50 each pair of tires from Discount Tire. This is what I would have put on the car would have put on black beauty if i had to buy cars these uh tires are actually uh almost new they got tons of tread left on them so black beauty is going to end up with steely wheels and hubcaps um because i'm not going to pay to have the tires swapped out because that's like 40 dollars a tire to swap it out i might as well buy brand freaking new ones and just save these for something else but anyhow as you can see there's still a bunch of meat left on that tire all the hubcaps are good this one's kind of scuffed up a little bit but like I said, it's an LS. It's got a billion and a half miles on it. Um, it does start. They didn't clean their garbage out of this thing here. They even have the owner's manuals in the glove box. But as you can see, it's been open to the weather. There's a bunch of, uh, bunch of rain water on the floor. So I'll probably just drill holes in the floorboard to let that drain out. Um, the back is just totally ruined. I don't know that I'll really get uh, the seats out of it. The seats are kind of cheesy, but uh, there's lots of good parts here. There's lots of good parts. Uh, let me pop the engine compartment and take a look under there. And we'll uh, fire up, give you a, a taste of some Chevy Thunder. There we go, look at that. 3.5 liters of Chevrolet Monsterness. And it's got a Duralast Gold battery in it that actually looks pretty new. I think, uh, I think we did really well on this car. So anyhow, I'm going to go up and pay for it. We'll get it loaded on the trailer and we'll get headed home very slowly. My first Copart walk around video. And also, I just spent like the last hour walking around looking at cars and... This is, I could spend all day here. This is really cool. I love this place. Anyhow, all right, we'll talk to you soon. All right, YouTubers, we're loaded up, ready to go. Secured on the trailer. Um, do a quick walk around here. I added some uh, ratchet straps to the back, tighten the back down. I also had to add a ratchet strap, pull that muffler off to the side so that it wouldn't be dragging on the axle. But, she's on there. Yeah, we're squatting a little low. It's going to be a slow ride home. But, we'll get there. And the funny story is, okay, this is really weird. So I'm walking, after I hand the uh, driver my paperwork, I'm walking over to uh, my car. And I look down next to uh, that telephone pole right there. And right at the base of that pole was a bunch of uh, like car parts, like just junk. I looked down and I said, uh, man, that looks like an Impala uh, chrome trim ring. This one right here, you know, like that, that shape. It's a very distinctive shape. And I looked down and not only was there a trim ring, but there was this. An Impala grill in perfect shape with the emblem attached which kind of makes up for um, the one that they damaged on me when I picked up uh, the black, uh, the other black uh, 
uh, co-park car. So, anyhow, um, yay. <laughs> yay me. So, we're going to get out of here and we're going to drive home very slowly. And um, we'll get this thing off the trailer. And hopefully everything will go well. And we won't have a problem. But uh, that's also not fun waddling around in the mud trying to get this thing uh secured down but we got her done i'll uh i'll catch up with you guys at home peace okay folks we took a little break here for a minute got uh, a little bit something to eat at uh, the golden arches not a sponsor and as you can see we're being followed very closely all right, we're about halfway there. Um, it's been about an hour and a half, so I imagine we got a, probably about an hour left to go. It's pretty slow going. Um, I can do about 40, 45 on the way home. So I don't want to push it any any faster than that and um, <clears throat> risk getting in an accident with this thing. So anyhow, um, we'll see you when we get home. Thanks for sticking with me on this. This is and another adventure all right folks we're home you can see it's here all in one piece now uh all we have to do is figure out how we're gonna unload this it's been raining today although it didn't rain down here much i gotta see how dry and firm the field is here what i'm thinking about doing is backing up and putting the uh, ass end of the trailer right here, the ramps down this way, and then backing it off that way. Should be kind of a straight shot. Um, I just gotta figure how uh, how soft this is. It feels pretty good. So, um, I got it. You can see it's kind of the, the slight incline there. The trailer is almost like level with the, uh, there won't be much of a dip in the, the, the ramps at all. I've also brought a floor jack out so I can jack up the front of the trailer and the back of the Suburban, kind of level this trailer out. Well, there she is off the trailer. I had, uh, I had a tripod set up and everything to catch it coming off the trailer. And then I took it for a little rip up and down the street and it recorded opposite of everything that I intended to record. So it was stopped when it should have been going and it was going when it should have been stopped. So I got nothing. Anyhow, believe it or not, uh, other than being loud, it is, uh, it actually drives fairly well. Uh, one thing I did find is that um, the driver's seat does not move. I can't adjust it forward and back, but I don't care because I'm not driving this car. It will never be fixed. The only time I'm gonna drive it is into the barn and out of the barn and probably back up on a trailer when I take it to the, the junkyard. Anyhow, I got to get this uh, all put back together and uh, get it out of the field so I can get the car in the barn and um, take the trailer back. But I think it's been a good day. The Suburban did really well. I'm very proud of her today. And um, nothing is uh, Nothing's messed up on the front end of this car. Like I said, there's a little bit of a split in the lower uh, bumper cover, but that was there. Um, that was there before they. Uh, that I mean, basically, as long as the hood, and the grills, and the rest of the bumper cover are okay, and the fenders are okay, and the doors are okay, I don't really care. That's what I bought this car for was those parts. Uh, the the tires are are a bonus, man. That's three hundred dollars I don't have to spend on that car over there. So. Um, that's a good thing. And then I'm going to have a barn full of spare parts. But anyhow, uh, we'll get everything transferred over to this car. And we'll get everything transferred over to Crash over there. And then we'll uh, we'll scrap this car. We'll pull everything else off of it and scrap it. Um, I think that's going to be it for right now. Um, we'll bring you along a little bit later uh, when we start pulling parts off this. But um, my faith in Copart has been restored. And uh, that really that back window really needs to be taped up just to keep the critters out of it. Anyhow, I may just do that with a couple plastic bags, kind of like I did over there on crash. But I got to get uh, busy here. My daughter will be home from school anytime, so um, we'll get this rocking and rolling. And um, 
the projects will continue. Thanks for coming along, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.